So Roblox is packages are reusable assets that allow you to modify all of their instances after modifying only one of them. And they even work between multiple games. So I'm basically just going to overview them. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So first I need to say that the packages can be basically any instance, basically ranging from scripts to particle emitters and so on. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use a 3D object. And I'm usually just going to cover how to make packages in Roblox Studio. And it's as simple as just having the instance and the best practice is to have it grouped. And as to why I'm going to explain in a minute, but I'm basically just going to group this steel drum. And I'm also going to change the name of the group. And to convert this into a package, we basically just right click on it. And there is going to be an option to convert to package right here that we simply want to select. And it's going to pop out with this window where you're going to have the options to basically name this package. So I'm just going to name this steel drum package. Then the description and the ownership, which I'm going to leave as me, but if you're working in a group, let's say, it would be the best to set the group as the owner in case you wanted to use this asset in the group. And lastly, there is an option to allow comments, but I'm just going to press on submit. And now it created our package successfully and you can see that there is now an icon next to this object. So if I close this window and hover over it, it's going to say that package auto updates are off. And what exactly publishing this as a package did, it added another instance called a package link. And this packaging has some of properties, mostly the auto update one and the version number. And to present this right now, I'm going to select the auto update on on and now we change the icon on this model saying that package auto updates are on and I'm basically just going to duplicate it and have one additional example where for this one, I'm going to disable the auto update and basically show a pretty neat thing about the packages. So if I were to modify, for example, the first or the second one where I could just change the maybe Sidram's PBR material and the color property to be maybe a little bit more greenish. Now, if I do that, it's going to prompt me with this window right here, saying that modifying packages disables auto updates until you publish or revert the changes. This is right here because it's basically notifying you that you are making changes to a package, but I'm just going to press on OK. Now, there is going to be a yellow icon indicating that there has been a change made to this package right here, and it's going to have the auto update disabled. And the auto update is disabled like it said in the warning message. And that's basically because if you had a modify asset and basically another asset that you wanted to modify, it wouldn't be possible for the first modify asset to keep the changes that it made because the update from the first one is going to basically override them. So that's the thing about that. And now let's ask the question on how would I basically update the other two assets. So basically on the modified version, I can simply just press on right click and select the option to publish to package, where if I do that, you can see that it automatically updated the first one, but this third one has another icon next to it, saying that the package update is available. And for this third asset to basically just fetch this update, I would need to right click on it again and select the get latest package option. And this is just going to ask me if I really want to get the latest version. So I'm going to press on get latest and it also updated this package. Now I'm just going to turn the auto update on because I just really quickly want to show an example of why the package system is pretty much powerful. So let's just say that I had a lot of these steel drums in my game. And again, even if another game is using this package, it's also going to receive these updates. But basically, if I were to change this one, again, go to the surface appearance, and I'll change its color to be, for example, just maybe this dark green and press on OK. Now it's going to prompt me again that this asset was updated. So I'm going to enter the modified state. And now if I were to right click on this one again and select the publish to package. And then just wait a little bit. It's going to again just change all of them. So this is a great tool to utilize to, for example, if you wanted to have a scene that used a lot of assets of the same type like these barrels, for example, and didn't want to go through all of them and change them manually. Because normally I would have to go to this Sidram, for example, then change the color here, then change the color on this one, and same with this one right here. I would basically have to individually change them, and that would be a lot of work. So yeah, now going back to the properties, if I go to this package link, you can see that this is now on the version 3. And same if I go to this syndrome right here. Now, all of these syndromes are basically just going to be on the right version. And another thing with the modified packages is that these three right here are modified and the rest of them aren't. So if I were to make another change to the syndrome, maybe this time I'm going to do a change on the model package by, for example, adding a part, then pressing on OK. 
if I were to basically do this and also rotate some of the bodies, for example, because I saw the initial that they keep their revelant position and rotation. But anyways, now if I made the change to this package and then publish it again, it will do the same on all of these different assets, right? But these ones right here, since these are modified, they didn't really get the update. And now the arrow next to them is going to say both that they are modified and that there is also an update. And one of the things that I can do right now is simply right click and press on the get latest package. And again get latest. Then this one is going to prompt me with the package modification will be overwritten, so I just want to press on the override and update. And for this one, another thing that I can do is right click and this time I can press on the undo changes to package. And it's automatically going to get the latest version too. But I'm just going to remove this and basically go back to the previous example with having a lot of barrels. Now before I talk about all of the different stuff with packages, I first want to show how to turn this back into a model and, and it's as simple as just removing the package link. So this is again a normal model. And lastly there is a thing with the update all option where if for example some of the sealed RAMs had the package links and the auto update option disabled, then if I made another change, instead of having to select every single one of them, then pressing on the get latest package, what I can do is for example select the sealed RAM and select the update all option. And this is going to select the places to update with the current package version. Right now it's version 6, which is the latest. So if I were to press on update, it basically is going to start loading and then it's going to finish and say that it was updated. So this is a pretty neat option that you can actually do. And I also wanted to talk about things that you shouldn't really do with packages. And one of them is that if this is an object rendered in the 3D world, you shouldn't publish the mesh as a package and same with a folder instance. And the thing about this one is that a folder is not going to contain any location or orientation data. So whenever you, for example, move the folder and I should actually publish this as a package where it's actually prompting me that, hey, you shouldn't do that saying that this object has a 3D coordinates, but it is not a model, so moving or rotating it will count as modifying the package. So I'm just going to submit it, and basically if I try to move this, it's already going to count this as a modification, so even if I duplicate it and move it, then press on OK, then publish these changes, then go to the first barrel and get the latest package, it's going to move it into this position. So whenever you, for example, just move the folder, it's going to move all of the other packages into the same location. And same goes with rotating this object. So I'm just going to delete this. And you basically get the idea. And the same thing goes for meshes, where if you were to publish a mesh as a package and basically try to scale it, it would prompt you that this asset was modified and it would do the same thing that it did on this example. And what would also be really bad is that right now I am able to basically rescale this. If I were to make another change, then choose publish to package, it would keep the size, the orientation and everything else. So I can have multiple assets. And why did it revert it like this anyways? I'm guessing that something is just broken with the version history. And these three right here weren't updated because they have the auto update to be off. But I am able to have different sizes, rotations and positions because I'm basically rescaling the model. But if this was a mesh, all of the meshes would be basically the same size. Because if I for example go to the steel drum, then change its scale, then publish the package, you can basically see what happened. So again, you don't want to publish the packages as meshes, parts or folders because it's basically just going to break. And the folder has an exception because you can have instances that are not rendered in a 3D world. Like again, for example, scripts. And lastly, I just wanted to go over all of the different features that Roblox's package system has. And it's mostly the stuff when I right click on the package. I already covered the publish to package the undo changes, the get latest package, as well as the update all. But there is also the package details and the compare package version. So I'm going to go to the details first. And this is going to open a window with the title, description, the creator and the genre where you can also see the asset ID and the status of this asset as well. But I can also go to the permission tab, see the package creator and for example people that I can share this with. And I could even share this with, well, this guy and I'm going to have an option to use it and view as well as edit. And I can well just save this. 
and for some reason I tried to go back boot, it gave me an error. So anyways, I can't open the package details anymore, so well, let me just restart this place. So again, this is going to be the general, the permission, and there is also the version. And from this window, you can also add notes that you can describe the changes to the package, and I can also discard and submit them. But I also have an option to restore the version, where if I for example press on this number and press on save, it's going to restore the version on all of the packages that have the auto update on. And lastly, there is going to be the compare package version, where I have the package and these instances. So you have the visual overview as well as the properties, where you can see if anything, for example, is going to be changed, where if I just expand this and select the compare, let's say the version number 8, with the local copy, which is the copy right here, and just go to the properties, and for example the CDRAM, there is going to be this indicator saying that, hey, something was changed. And what was changed was the size, C frame, and the origin position. Now, if something was added or removed, I can, for example, compare this to one of the other copies, it's going to give me a plus right here. But if I go to version number 5, shouldn't this tell me that this part was removed? Oh, never mind, I need to compare version number 4 to version number 5, because it's going to tell me that this part was removed right here. And there is also the change summary, which I'm not exactly sure what it is, and it's an AI overview, so anyways. But yeah, you can basically compare all of the package versions, see which properties were changed, which instances were removed, or even added. So yeah, that's for the overview and the tutorial on the Roblox's packages system. There is also a lot of different stuff that you can do with, for example, attributes and scripting, but I think that was a lot of information already, and I understand that it can be kind of chaotic. But yeah, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also, check out my Patreon page. And thank you for watching. Hope everyone had a nice day. And see ya, guys. And also, thank you for the wishes for recovering well in the comments. Since, like I mentioned, I am still sick. But, anyways, see ya.